Okay, find the distance between each pair of points. So, um, sorry. I am not going to make you guys memorize these formulas, but you will have to use them on the test. And next year you do have to have them memorized. So, FYI there. I'll probably just write them up here and leave them. Does anybody think they remember the distance formula? Nope. Well, the square root one? Yeah. Okay, that's the distance formula. How about midpoint? What did they do next? They did midpoint next, and then they did slope. No. So a midpoint has two coordinates, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So the x-coordinate was the average of the x-coordinates, and the y-coordinate was the average of the y-coordinates. Because when you average numbers, it gives you the number in the middle, like a midpoint. Okay, and then the slope formula to find the slope between two points. So those, those are the three. Uh, this is not a formula, but it is something we need to know, and I might have to make you memorize this one. What is the uh, equation of a line? How do we usually write the equation of a line? <coughs> yeah, y equals mx plus b. Remember we used that the other day, Monday maybe? No, two, last week I guess. Uh, it's, that's not really a formula, but it, it's a form of a line. Alright, so we need that stuff. It shows up on there. Okay, uh, so number 23, so I'm going to do x minus, this distance formula, x minus x, 3 minus 9, plus y minus 1, 2 minus 2. Does the order matter? Okay, no, when you subtract things in opposite orders, you get opposite answers, like or negative, but when you square those answers, you still get the positive version. So no, it doesn't matter. So this would be negative 6 squared is 36, negative 8 squared is 64, so I get 100, the square root of 100 is, remember a lot of these had like square root answers like 2 squared of 5 or something like that. Um, Try to simplify it as much as you can. No decimals. Looks like 24 does not. It's a square root answer, but it doesn't really simplify. 25 says find the midpoint. So that's the average one. So you do x plus x over 2, comma y plus y over 2. x plus x would be 14 plus negative 6, comma y plus y, negative 3 plus 21, 14 plus negative 6, 8 over 2, negative 3 tw plus 21, 18 over 2. Uh, is the midpoint. Two separate numbers. X and Y coordinate. Um, might be above one of the buttons. Might have to do a second. I don't know. Yeah, it's on there somewhere. Did you find it? Okay, 27 says the slope, so that was the 
Solve formula y minus y over x minus x. So 27 y minus y over x minus x. Reduce that as much as you can. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. Twenty-nine and thirty, these are doozies, so buckle up. Alright, twenty-nine says for each pair of points find A the distance. Okay, we were just doing that. B the midpoint, C the slope. So it's kind of the same thing except for They give us is C and D instead of numbers. So, anyway, here's the distance formula square root of x minus x, right? C minus 0. What is C minus 0? Y minus y would be D minus 0. What is D minus 0? What's C minus zero? Come on now. C. C. Right? Minus zero doesn't do anything. C minus zero is C. So this is C squared plus D squared. The square root of all that. Does that simplify? No. The answer is no. Does not. Um, do you guys know whether this right here simplifies or not? Yes. What's this simplify to? X. Technically, it's the absolute value of x because if x were negative, like negative 2, square root of positive 4, square root of positive, positive 4 is 2. So it spits out a positive every time, but yeah, basically square and square root cancel each other out. It doesn't work up here because the plus in the middle, yeah, it just doesn't, you can't square root the whole thing. It doesn't simplify, let's put it that way. So that'll be the answer to A. And then the second one was midpoint. How did we do midpoint? Average the x's, x plus x divided by 2, average the y's. Um, what would that simplify to? What's c plus zero is what? C over two. Can I do anything with c over two? No. Call it one half c, but that's not really simplifying it. So it's c over two, d over two. And what was the last one? Slope. So the slope is y minus y over x minus x. The y's are d and 0. y minus y over x minus x. What does that simplify to? d over c. Thirty-one. What is the slope of W X? So how do we find slope? Rise over run. So from W to X, what is the rise from those two points? If you're going from left to right, it would be negative two, right? 
Negative two. What is the run from W to X? Four. So the slope is negative two over four, or what? What was that reduced to? Negative one half. Okay, 32 says which segments are perpendicular. Um, how do you know whether segments are perpendicular or not? Well, perpendicular slopes are like if one slope is 3 fourths, the perpendicular slope is negative 4 thirds. They're opposite reciprocals. What do we know about parallel slopes? They're the same. Perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals, so you flip the sign, flip the fraction. The parallel slopes are the same. Okay, so it looks like what we're going to need for 32 and 33 is to know what all these slopes are, to tell whether they're perpendicular or parallel or not. So we already found the slope for WX, so maybe what's the slope for ZY? From Z to Y, what is the rise? Negative one. From z to y, what is the run? Right, so the slope of that line is negative one fourth. Is that parallel to wx? No. Slope was negative two fourths, or negative one half. So no, it's not parallel. Uh, what, from z to w, zw, what is the rise? Uh, is it, I think it's five. What is the run? Is it two? Yeah. So positive five halves is the slope. Okay, from y to x, what is the rise? Four. What is the run? What's four over two? Two. Or two over one. Okay, so all together our slopes were negative one half, negative one fourth, five halves, and two, or two over one. Um, are any of those lines parallel? What do we know about parallel lines? Have the same slope. Do any of those lines have the same slope? No, oh, they're all different. That's not the same. Okay, anyways, um, do any of these lines have perpendicular slopes? Yeah, these two are perpendicular, offset reciprocal. So on 33, it says which segments are parallel. So which segments are parallel? None. Okay, uh, 35. Uh, I think we did this assignment like Friday or something. It said find the uh, X and Y intercepts. Well, actually the Y intercept, if it's written in this form, what's, what's this form called where it says Y equals? It's called slope intercept because this number is the slope and this number is the what? The Y intercept, slope intercept slope intercept this is the slope this is the y intercept y equals mx plus b so when it asks for the y intercept it's just one or zero one okay how do i find the x intercept though okay back on this 
this assignment, we found the x-intercept. What do all x-intercepts have in common? 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, negative 1, 0. They all have a y value of 0. Two, so find the x-intercept. What we did was we put in a 0 for y and solve for x. When you put a 0 in for y, this term disappears. You get 2x equals 6. So x is 3. This would be an x-intercept. Or to find the y-intercept, you can put 0, all the y-intercepts have 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, have an x value of 0. So to find the y-intercept, you can put in 0 for x. So 2 times 0 goes away, 3y equals 6, divided by 3y is 2. So that would be the y-intercept. This is not a problem, I just made it up as an example. Okay, so how could I find the... We didn't have to use the trick to find the y-intercept here because it's in slope-intercept form. That is the y-intercept at 1. But how could I find the x-intercept? How could I find the x-intercept? You guys processing anything I'm saying? Put a 0 in for y. So if I put in a 0 for y, solve that for x. <coughs> How would I solve that for x? Minus one. Divide by negative a half, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative two. So what is negative one times negative two? Two. So the x-intercept is at two zero. It's not really x equals y-intercept was 0, 1. Oh, does it say graph? I didn't look. No, it does not say graph. Oh, it does say to graph, yeah. Those are the only two problems. Jeez, that line is just left here. No, those next two are graphs also. So we got four graphs, so I'll do a half sheet. So, 
the y intercept was one, the x intercept was two, and we're supposed to graph that one. So the y intercept was one, and the x intercept was two. Voila. Yeah, 35 would have been a lot easier to graph if we just used the slope and the y-intercept because it's in slope-intercept form. But, oh well, it's already done. The direction told us to. So on 37, we're supposed to use the y-intercept and the slope. So what should we do first to graph this? Right, solve for y, so it says y equals mx plus b. Um, so how do I get y by itself? Minus 2x first. Does 9 minus 2x mix? No, also we put negative 2x in front, so it's in slope intercept form. Then what do I do? divided by 3 All right so uh, plus 3 what are, are we starting the graph up 3 That's not kind of burnt And then where do I go from there? Down to oh, it's the heater. When you first turn the heater on, it's beginning to hear it. Well, it's not a little bit burning. How did they turn the heater on? It's cold. It's lukewarm. It's really cold in here. In here? No, it's warm. Oh, like in here? Okay. Yeah, the slope is negative two thirds, so you can't put a negative on both. So it's down two, right three, or up two, back three. All right, this last part. Really well, was challenging um, for you guys to remember, anyway. Um, well, 38 is kind of like 34 and 35, so it's just fine. It's not graphing. It's just find the intercepts and the slope. So anyway, uh, but 39 it says write the equation of the line. So what did we use for an equation of a line? y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. That's what we use. y equals mx plus b. Okay, and then the information that they give us is um, on 39 that the, the line needs to go through point 0.23 and it needs to be parallel to y equals 3x plus 7. Alright, if the line is supposed to be parallel to this line, what does that tell us? What do we know about parallel lines? What's the same? Yes, the slope is the same. Parallel lines have the same slope. So, if their line has a slope, that's what we're going to use in our line. What's the slope of their line? Three. Slope. Okay. Uh, 
are we going to have the same y-intercept? No. The lines are parallel. They're not the same lines. They're going to hit the y-axis different place. But basically, we're going to use their slope of 3. So n is going to equal 3. And it also told us this point, 2, 3, is supposed to be on the line. Um, basically, when you're doing slope-intercept form, all you need is a slope and a y-intercept to write the equation, like y equals 3x plus 7. Um, we already have the slope. How do I find the b, the y-intercept? This point that they gave us is one of the infinite solutions that should work in the equation. So when I plug those in for x and y, that can help me find the b. So if I plug in everything, y is 3, the slope is 3, the x value they gave us was 2. Solve that for B. It's hard to believe that they turned on that heater already, though. Surely the thermostat wouldn't automatically turn on the heater. their line, not our line. Okay, so b is negative 3, so we got the slope was 3, the y-intercept is negative 3, so y equals 3x minus 3. you guys know why M and B, we put a number in for those two, but not for X and Y? Yeah. Well, we did plug something in for X and Y, but then we turned it back to X and Y. Uh, the slope and the y-intercept, there's only one thing that they can be. So they turn into a constant. But the, the X and the Y, there's an infinite number of combinations, infinite number of solutions. And each point on the line, when you graph it, is one of those solutions. So they stay x and y, because there's lots of stuff that can be infinite things that can be. All right, anyways, on 40 it looks pretty similar, except for it says perpendicular to the line, y equals 3x plus 7. So what do we know about perpendicular lines? Their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So if the slope of their line is 3, what's the slope of our perpendicular line going to be? What's 3 as a fraction? Right, so the, op yeah. so the slope you need to use for 40 is negative 1 third. <laughs> 41 and 42 are pretty, pretty much the same thing. It's just uh, got a picture version of it. Um, so 41 says that uh, we want the equation to go through A and we want it to be parallel to line C. Uh, where is point A at? Four one. Okay, if we want it to be parallel to line C, what does that tell us? If, if we want our line to be parallel to line C, what does that tell us? It's going to have the same slope as line C. So what is the slope of line C? It's down to right one, right? Okay, it's down.
down two, right one. So it's negative two over one, or just negative two. So that's the slope. And for our parallel line on 30 or 41, we want to use the same slope. So we're going to use that slope and this point. So if we have the slope, we've got that, right? We need to find the B value though. How do I find the B value? Just put in the X and Y to help me find it. Likely excuse. All right, so we got uh, slope is negative two, the B value is nine. Okay, so yeah, 42 is just kind of like 40 supposed to have a perpendicular. So you have to do a perpendicular slope. Yes. Yes. Do what? Oh, the square, square root button? Yeah. 